So your panels will not work if they're covered in snow. Um, if, you're, if it's mounted on a steeper pitched roof, um, it will sh the snow will shed a lot quicker than a lower pitched roof would. Um, they do also, the, the solar panels themselves kind of give off a little bit of heat and start to start the ice melt um, to where it gets slippery enough that the whole array will, will shed. Um, in Northeast Ohio, we take winter into account. Um, basically, we, we expect your system to get 4.2 sun hours of light every day throughout the whole year. Obviously, you get more than that in the summertime, so that's where your production is made up in the spring, summer, and fall. Solar panels do work when it's cloudy. Um, they do like the cooler temperatures. Um, there's a little less irradiance, but uh, the solar panels are, are made to pick up diffuse lighting, and so they do work fairly well in clouded weather. Some of the best months for solar in northeastern Ohio um, is the early fall, spring time uh, when the temperatures are a little lower. Um, obviously, you're making a lot of power during the summer, but at the, with the heat, the panels aren't as efficient as they would be otherwise. When we're evaluating a home uh, for a potential solar installation, uh, what we're really looking for is um, unshaded, free roof space or ground space. Um, if you have enough land for a ground mount, it can you know, be a perfect opportunity to uh, utilize your yard. So homes that have too much shade uh, or too little roof space um, would not be great candidates for solar arrays. Typically, you don't have to clean your solar panels. Um, the weather, rain, snow, usually do a pretty good job of uh, keeping them clear and producing. Um, sometimes when the pollen comes, you know, you could if you wanted to, in the evening or early morning, once the panels are cooled down enough, um, you can take a hose and spray them down. But uh, it's not something you want to do during the day. It can develop micro fractures. So there's little to no maintenance that a homeowner will have to worry about. Um, us at Better Together Solar, we constantly monitor our systems remotely. So if there is an equipment failure, we oftentimes catch it before the homeowners do and uh, we'll send someone out and get it taken care of. There are many types of solar panels. Um, typically, um, we use monocrystalline. There's also polycrystalline. Um, monocrystalline has been around for a while um, and the efficiencies on them are improving every day and it's just a great residential and commercial panel. Solar installations have been increasing uh, exponentially, uh, especially here in Northeast Ohio. A lot of people um, are taking more of an interest in it and uh, we see that with our volume of calls that we get every day. Depending on the size of the home and the usage, the electrical usage inside the home, a typical solar array in Northeastern Ohio could cost anywhere between eight to $20,000. And it also depends on available space. The ROI on a solar installation in Northeastern Ohio is anywhere between eight and 10 years uh, for a residential project. I would recommend anyone considering t uh, a solar installation um, to work on um, making your home more, as efficient as possible, um, changing to LED lights um, and uh, energy efficient uh, appliances are uh, great ways to reduce the amount of solar you need so it can reduce the cost of the solar installation up front as well. If you own a solar array and you're producing solar energy and not using that energy in your home, uh, the remaining balance flows out to the grid. 
and with net metering, typically it means that you get traded a kilowatt hour for a kilowatt hour from the utility companies, and that is reflected on your utility bill um, at the end of the month. So it's a way of um, basically uh, increasing the value of a solar array. So the utility company will not send you a check at the end of the year for any additional power that you have provided the grid. Well, uh, these days, no, they're uh, all digital, um, but there is um, directional arrows on the meter that will show you if you're taking energy from the grid or putting your solar energy back to the grid. Uh, an inverter takes the DC energy that is produced by the solar panels and it converts it to AC energy that you can use in your home and send back to the grid as well. And a renewable energy credit is basically a megawatt hour of production, solar production. Um, so for every megawatt hour, you are entitled to an SREC that you can sell to an aggregation company. So there is a federal tax credit available. It is, uh, as of 2021, it is 26%, and that you can get back when you file for your taxes. Power purchase uh, agreements um, can be a great option for anybody who can't take advantage of the federal tax credit. Um, basically, um, someone who is willing to put up the funds for the array um, commits to a contract with you, um, and you agree on agreed upon terms, and um, you basically buy back the energy that the solar produces from the PPA owner at a discounted price. The zero money down is a real thing. Um, I would encourage anyone interested in installing a solar array um, to consider the benefits of paying for it outright um, and the long-term potential costs of taking on a loan like that. So the warranty on solar panels, um, it'll vary on the manufacturer. Um, we install tier one solar panels and all of them come with at least a 25 year warranty, um, guaranteeing 80% production capacity at the end of the warranty. Solar panels are typically only ever broken in transportation. So once they're safely installed up on your roof, um, the only thing that you have to worry about is maybe a critter um, getting underneath the solar panel and chewing a wire. Um, we do sell critter guards for that. Um, and it also protects from debris and other things you know, that you don't want underneath your array from getting underneath there. Um, the solar panels are made with tempered glass, so there's really little that can damage it up here in North, Northeast Ohio. The solar installation company that installed your panels um, should be keeping an eye on your monitoring. Depending on the system that is installed, there are different types of monitoring and different levels. Something like a solar edge system, um, you can monitor each individual panel on its own. Um, but if you were to use a large string inverter, um, you kind of lose that panel-to-panel uh, -panel monitoring ability. So a microinverter is an, in, um, an inverter that goes under each individual solar panel, um, much like an optimizer and a, a solar edge um, system is monitored panel by panel. Um, a microinverter system such as Enphase gives us the same ability to monitor panel by panel. Your solar installation, unless you have battery backup, will not work um, during a blackout because of the rapid shutdown requirements. So basically, if there's a blackout, um, that potentially means that there's gonna be utility companies working on the lines and they don't need those backfed while they're working on them. Um, so your system automatically shuts down. A uh, backup battery makes a lot of sense for um, any home, uh, especially if you have a lot of power outages, you have some critical loads that you need to run 
um, when, like, when the power's out, any medical equipment. Um, if, if you have extended outages that uh, can melt your freezer, um, you definitely want to start looking into a battery backup. The cost of batteries um, varies widely. Um, there's so many different uh, battery technologies out there right now and new ones being developed. Um, depending on what you're looking to power and how long you, you want it powered um, and the type of battery that you're using, whether it's lithium ion or lead acid um, are two examples. You could find a system, a small battery backup system for $5,000. Um, you could go all the way up to $25,000 uh, depending on what, what it is you as a homeowner would like to, to have secured power for in the event of a, uh, a blackout. I think the direction that most solar installations are going to be going in the next 10 years here in Northeast Ohio is going to be with battery backup systems. Um, in 2021 alone, we've had more battery uh, backup requests than ever before. Uh, a lot of people are more concerned about um, how the, 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 the stability of the grid, um, how they're using their power and when they're using it. Technology is changing on a year-to-year -year basis. Wattage of panels is increasing. Um, that being said, you know, with an ROI between eight and 10 years and a life expectancy of 25 years, there's really no need to, be, uh, to upgrade. One potential upgrade could be that um, when the system is installed, if you are interested in batteries down the line, make sure that your system is battery ready. I'm, I'm not a realtor, um, but one thing that um, I know a lot of customers have done in the past uh, when someone has approached them about purchasing their home and they have a solar array on it is they show them their electric bill and the cost that they're paying for the electric and how low it is compared to a neighbor's. A solar co-op is when a bunch of uh, homeowners get together who are interested in solar and they can basically pool their buying power to get a better contract um, for their installation. Um, solar panels can be uh, a good DIY project if you're looking to do something smaller, um, maybe just a power a sump pump or something like that when, the, when uh, the grid goes down, or something educational for your kids. Um, that can be uh, a lot of fun as well. Uh, there's some solar powered race cars out there that you can pick up and put together. So um, there's, there's a lot of fun opportunities, but typically with a uh, residential install, I would recommend a professional. It's not a good idea to install solar when you're renting. Um, you'd have to have the homeowner's permission and it'd be better if you had some sort of a long-term lease um, with the, the building owner so you, you know that you're going to be getting um, the benefit of a solar array. Depending on the city, it usually takes about a month. Um, there are some cities that are a little bit quicker. Um, there's also possibly review boards that we might have to attend, review board meetings that we might have to attend um, that could extend the permitting period. But uh, I'd say on average, um, permit application takes about a month to process. So first, um, it starts with a phone call and, um, or an email. And then what we do is take your information. We ask for your electric bill and your address. We'll actually use a program to take a look at your house. Um, and we'll be able to make a proposal using the aerial images to give you a general idea of how many panels we can fit and a general cost. Once we pass that information along to the customer, um, we then head out to and do a site evaluation and make sure that what we proposed will actually fit. Once that's agreed upon, we sign a contract. As soon as the contract is signed, we start doing all the permitting paperwork. At the end of an install, we get the system inspected. And then when it's inspected, we take the inspection tag send it to the utility company, 
and the utility company will come out and install a bi-directional meter and at that point we have permission to operate and that's when we can turn the system on. Once we send the, ins the past inspection tag to the utility company, they take that as a work order to come out and um, install the bi-directional meter on your home. And what that is, is permission to operate. Once we have permission to operate, we can then turn your system on and you're good to go.